Timothy Brennan. I own a restaurant uh, called Two Little Fish in Westerly, Rhode Island, uh, located at Miss Swanigate Beach. Um, so I do have some practical expertise as two years ago I did eliminate plastics to the limit of my ability uh, at my restaurant. And I can address some of the issues that were just brought up uh, in terms of the hummus containers. They do make PLA plastic, which is the good plastic. Remember those three letters, PLA, that stands for the polylactic acid. It's made out of organic materials such as corn or plant, cornstarch, things like that. It is clear, it is display worthy. Um, I display, for example, my salads in it. You make your hummus and, crack and package it on premise. I make my fresh salads. For example, a six by six plastic container hinged with a lid, 240 count, I pay $61 for it. I, of course, have no idea the dimensions of your hummus containers, but I'm sure they're available. I don't know about the price comparison, that would be something, but the alternative is there. Uh, as far as example, someone said, well, I'd not be able to sell water bottles. As far as I understand the ordinance, of course you would be, because they are recyclable. As a small businessman myself, I could not forego the revenue stream represented by, by water bottles. What I also did, though, was, as someone here suggested, uh, you have to, it's a learning process. I approached a company whose recyclable bottle is 30% plant fiber and 100% recyclable, so I sell that. Uh, as far as uh, things like uh, you mentioned down the road, uh, you know, what does um, Shaw's do on site? Certainly, uh, there will be effect as well. I was in a stop and shop today, and they're, you know, at the deli, they're packaging meats, they're cutting steaks to order. They do quite a few things. Uh, so, both uh, employers and businesses, large and small, will be affected by it. Um, let me give you a brief background on, although we've been in business for about a quarter century, uh, about six years ago, something terrible happened. We got hit by a superstorm sandy. And uh, that was a disaster uh, for many businesses down where I am at. We are right on the beach. There was destroyed buildings, destroyed businesses, destroyed lives. There was exposed septic systems. There was mountains of sand, sand eight feet deep across roads and across my deck and shattered, everything was shattered. It took, took a full year of nonstop work for us to get reestablished. It was that that made me think, that made me aware of what a fragile environment my business is located in. Um, because of the location, I'm on a narrow strip of land between a barrier beach, which is you know the coastline, and a coastal feature, which is right behind me, it's a large salt pond. Uh, because of that, uh, DEM and the, um, the health department declared that we had to be single service. In other words, they did not want us to be doing a lot of uh, dishwashing with harsh chemicals that could be discharged into the groundwater. So they said, you are basically disposable dining. That's what you have to be, single use utensils. So we, once, so we had our first season, we closed our doors because we are seasonal. Two days later, we got wiped out by the hurricane. So after we managed to get back on our feet, we, we said to ourselves, what can we do to make sure that we lessen the chances of this happening again? So the first thing we did was you're going to face, we faced a mixture of both mandates and um, voluntary things that we had to do. A mandate, for example, was DEM said we had to install a state-of-the-art nitrogen system for our wastewater disposal. Since we are so close to the pond, uh, we had to upgrade, and uh, what that did was uh, it, when you remove nitrogen from the environment, it discourages weed growth in the pond behind us, for example, <coughs> which would threaten the life that lived there. So that's the first thing we had to do. Okay, but then after that, we thought, well, what can we do? One of the things that we saw down there in the debris was a ton, a ton of plastic. Plastic from 10, 20, 30 years of being buried wherever it was at. As, as you know, plastics never, for example, never ever dissipate. 
They never degrade. They never go away. Um, when some of the dunes were stripped away, you found cars that were buried from the 1950s. They were buried them along some of the businesses back then to build up the dunes over them. So obviously, environmental oversight was lacking back in the day. Um, but one of the first things we did is we banned, and for the sake of simplicity, let's not get involved with you know, polyethylene this, you know, it's foam, it's styrofoam. You know what I mean? That's, that's what everyone knows it as. The first thing we did was we banned it. We said we are not going to have anything to do with styrofoam, and then we said we are not going to have anything to do with plastic bags. So instead of styrofoam, we used paper for our cups. Um, instead of plastic bags, which we constantly see uh, in our waters, in our beaches, you know, being down there, uh, what people are attracted to our area is our, our pristine beaches. Well, they're not pristine when there's a plastic bag growing across your beach. It's tangled in the bushes. So we went to grocery sacks, plain old grocery sacks. So that was the low hanging fruit. Somebody said, you know, it's easy to do that. And it is easy to do that. Um, what we decided to do is there was also some things that weren't so easy. Uh, for example, we switched, you know, all of our, uh, all of our hot containers you know, soup bowls, and lids, things like that are all made out of paper. That does cost more. Um, our plates are all made out of recycled paper pulp. Um, we do not offer plastic straws. We have paper straws. You will have to have some sort of straw on site. There are people that may not have use of their hands that may need a straw to drink with. You must have some straws available, but you can certainly make them paper. Um, the thing that foiled us for a long time was the utensils. Now, I can buy a case of plastic forks for a thousand for about 14 and a half bucks. Okay? So, when I looked into the alternative, this was about four years ago, that same case of plastic forks was almost a hundred bucks. Sorry, I can't do that. So, but then prices started to come down. Right now, that same case of forks is about $44.50. So that was within my reach. Now, obviously, you can do the math. That makes your fork about four times as more expensive. Um, but it was within our reach, so we switched over. You can do things to mitigate the costs, of course. We have signs out there that say, uh, thank you for helping keeping our oceans plastic free. Knives served upon request, saw straws served upon request. Um, we do things like that. Uh, one of the things we noticed is you have to think of it as not so much of a burden as an opportunity. How can you capitalize on this? So that's what that's what we did. So we undertook a bunch of efforts uh, in conjunction with um, the reduction in plastic usage, such as. Um, we sponsored the Animal Rescue Clinic at the Mystic Aquarium, that a portion of every, of every meal sold is donated to the rescue and rehabilitation of stranded marine animals. We run various programs um, uh, on the, the town beaches, we sponsor cleanups, etc. So in other words, we really decided to go full into this. Um, the results, now, you are going to spend more money. Don't let anyone tell you you're not going to spend more money. There is a cost to it. Whether you call it an increase in your cost of goods sold, whether you call it an opportunity cost, whatever you call, call it, there will be um, a cost to it. But what we noticed was over the past two years, we have seen double-digit sales increases. And a large portion of that is the fact that back when I first started, we used to serve the generation, you know, the baby boomers. Now it's the millennials that are coming up. People want to see that when they are choosing a place to give their business to, that that business is giving back in some way to the community. They want to see that. When someone comes into my restaurant, the first thing they do is they photograph the food and they put it online, social media. The second thing they do is they read the back of my menu on all these things and all my signs that say, I, I do this, I do that, and they photograph that and they put it online. And pretty soon, the feedback that we were getting on social media uh, just snowballed. 
and people were coming in and they were, they're, they're saying, I don't mind paying an extra three cents for my form. We did all this without raising prices. And I never said that I would raise prices because of this, and I made that very clear to people because I'm not going to lie to them. But if you have to increase your price point, you know, from $9.95 to $9.99 to get something like this done, it pays for itself. It pays back. Um, so that's what we discovered, um, and that's been my experience with it. And um, so that's what I'm here to, to, to let you know about, that it can be done. It can be done with a minimal expense, and it can pay dividends. So if there's any questions about anything, Yes, sir. Are, are you alone in your community for having gone this direction? Uh, there are a couple places that have done it. I know one is, I believe, a place in, in Watch Hill called St. Clair X. And um, they have done what I have done, and they've also done other environmental things, um, you know, where they have uh, solar paneling, for example. I don't have solar paneling. Um, you know, and but other businesses, they've slowly started to come around because, quite frankly, this is the way of the future. It is what's going to happen. Um, like right now, you are at the beginning of the groundswell, and I commend you for getting ahead of that. Um, that's how I foresaw it. Eventually, it's going to become almost, um, it's going to become expected, and as a business, soon it will work to your detriment if you don't do this because you're going to, you know, serve someone something one day in a, in a plastic bag or something, and someone's going to look at you and be like, I can't believe you still use plastic, and then the next thing, what are they, what are they going to do? They're going to put it online. You know what I mean? And people will be like, well, I'm not going to patronize that place. People are, are, are quite, uh, quite demanding now, so you have to meet that demand. Uh, but no, I'm not the only one, but I'm one of the few. Anyone else from the audience? Plastic gloves, latex gloves. I have to wear them. 
okay? So there's no way around it. If I don't do it, I get cited by the health code. Um, you know, until, you know, they figure out, and until certain products are made available to outside, you can be plastic free to the limit of what you produce inside your building. But if I get a gallon plans in it, they come in in a plastic container, that's what they're coming in. You know what I mean? Um, so you will never be 100% plastic free. You just have to be plastic free to the practical limit of what you can do. And I think that's an important distinction here. Uh, it would behoove the town to remember that as well. Any other questions? I just have a random question. When he was talking before about composting and um, large producers of compost waste, are, are we, is our high school, we only have two food service sites in town for the schools, the high school and the middle school, because the elementary schools, all their food comes from the high school, right? I think the middle schools come from the high school too. Okay. They used to cook themselves. I don't know. It's been a bunch of years since I've been a parent there. Um, the, are we composting? Are we one of those big producers that produces over a certain number of tons? Can we be? Yes, you are. The high school and middle school are composting their food scraps from, the, from the kitchen. But that's voluntary. I don't, I don't think it's that required by the state. No, it's, I, I, it's not the state threshold. It's required or not. I mean, I just want, I, if I wanted, I mean, I know that you are on the green team and Jen's on the green team, and I just was curious if they are composting, like within the kitchen, the waste that they produce. Yeah. The high school is just going online. If they're not already, they will be within the. You know. So it's new, okay. Well, the middle school's been doing it for about a year, okay. and then the other four elementary schools have been composting in the cafeteria for up to 10 years for some of them. Great. Thanks. I knew yeah. that we had the answer. Hi. Our, um, our state law, we do have a law that's going to close the system. Some of you are saying two tons a week. You produce two tons a week at the compost. If you're within 15 miles of the compost, commercial compost, which, it, to my knowledge, would around this only one. So that law is not practical or, or enforceable right now. We got to do that. Um, I can speak to that a little bit. I know at the RIDEM at the meetings we've been having, there is supposed to be a large uh, anaerobic digester facility right next to Rhode Island Resources Recovery <coughs> Landfill that is due to go online um, in August of this year. Um, I'm not sure of your geographic proximity since I'm not a resident of the town, but certainly that facility, once it becomes operational, uh, will compost anything. There's a lot of those size operations within 15 miles. Yeah, yeah. So I know that um, the compostable facilities will be available for PLA plastics as well. Well, whatever, I'm sorry, whatever, whatever thing it was um, that I was spoken on the digester bit, but it was for the PLA plastic and Oh. <laughs>
I'm not sure the, the whole process, but. It's, it's hot compost. Yeah, hot compost. It's hot, conventional. Hot, hot compost. And that's what can they're they referring to. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about industrial one. And they're, they're, they're talking about the location of the board. Yeah. They already have to do it. Uh, Hope in Maine has a facility that they're already picking up at Hope in Maine in, in Warren. Uh, most of the large sort of commercial kinds of places, lifespan, are already using this company to pick up their waste. 